Hey everyone, so this is um, McMegan against Ojama. McMegan is on the Evergrande Bigs, which are winning against the Classics, which is Ojama's team. And um, the Bigs are winning 3-2. McMegan has had a rough start to this SPL so far. I believe he's 1-5, while Ojama is like 4-2 or 5-1 at this point. Um, he was playing DPP for the most part, but now he's back in ADV. So um, it's a lead cloister against a lead Zapdos. So obviously the cloister is going to be forced out. McMegan has been using some meme strategies as of late. So I'm expecting something interesting from him, while Ojama is just a generally good... ADV player. So let's see. This is going to be a really hot battle. Two of the top players, especially in ADV here. So I'm really looking forward to this. And I believe that BKC is going to narrate this as well. So um, this is going to be Paul Server. And his narration is going to be way better than mine because he knows ADV way, way, way more than mine. But this is a hype match. So and I feel like narrating right now. So why not? Um, just looking at the teams, I guarantee you that's a spiker from McMegan. So he's probably got an offensive team. Um, knowing the nature of Zapdos leads, it could be offensive. It could be like. Baton pass, a 3A, maybe T-Wave. There's a lot of viable moves on Zapdos. I've seen Thunder Wave, Toxic, Thunder, Thunderbolt, Baton Pass, Sub, Hidden Power Ice, Hidden Power Grass, even like Metal Sound, I guess. I don't know. McMegan used a lot of cool Zapdos sets over the last two years, and I've been exposed to him because I've been on Steam. So. Yeah, but I don't know if Ojama has quite the same spot for creativity or not, and I don't know what Ojama is using, but it is a lead Zapdos, which is a fine lead because it does a lot of things, and it could do a lot of things for teams and set up, you know, baton pass, offensive, especially attacking, even be mixed with drill pack, but I don't see that too often, and I've seen random swords dance pass to Zapdos with hidden bar fighting bopped me in a smog tour like three years ago. My, my Tyranitar trying to check his app. Those. That was a funny-ass time. But I, I don't think that's all too likely here. I think that Ojama's probably just a standard Thunderbolt variant. And I think he'll probably go for that here. But I don't know what McMegan's answer to this um Zapdos is, but we'll see here. He's going to go to Snorlax. I guess BKC is finally starting narrating. That's a Toxic. Maybe predicting that, and it's not an Immunity Lax. It's a Thick Fire Lax. So it's going to be a good start for Ojama. But maybe it is so, um, I assume McMegan's probably going to stand uh, or curse up and, or attack here, depending on his, the variant he is, while Ojama, I don't think he loses too much in staying in and attacking, but depends on the set. And this can be an Earthquake from McMegan. I think that's a bit too of an eager overprediction for a turn two in an ADV game when nothing is re revealed yet, but um, maybe it's drinking a Tyranitar or a Jirachi or something along those lines, so I guess that's cool. Um, I don't know how seriously McMegan's taking this, but I think he's trying to win at least, although he might not be preparing the most hard team, but yeah, um, Ojama's going to certainly have a slight advantage here because he's got a 33% damage on the Lax, and he's got a Toxic. While he hasn't taken much, and he's only revealed the lead Zapdos, while well, McMegan's revealed two Pokemon, of course. So, um, let's see what this turn 3 has to go. Maybe Ojama will switch on something Earthquake week here, trying to think that McMegan won't double Earthquake into the Zapdos here. Maybe he'll just stay in a Thunderbolt. I'm not quite sure. We'll have to see. Um, you're talking in French in the chat, except for an XD and an I'm taking the lead in bold from Ojama. But they're saying something in French. I don't know it. Um, and that does 25% with Zapdos. That could be self-destruct. Okay, that's going to even us out at 5-5. Five, five. But McMegan is going to have revealed one more Pokemon. So Ojama has like the teeniest of leads here, I guess. But that's just my matter. I think that could be good for McMegan if his offensive team was weak to opposing Zapdos. But can't be too sure because they've only revealed two, two Pokemon of his. It's only turn three. So really, um, it's just 5-5. Five, five, pretty even game. I don't know what McMegan will send out. I don't know what Ojama will send out. I assume the Pokemon Ojama sends out will be good versus Cloyster. And maybe McMegan will try to go to Cloyster to get spikes up and push the issue. Or maybe McMegan will go to something that's good against what's good against Cloyster. I don't know here. Let's wait and see. Um, but I think that both have played um, okay so far. I'm not really quite sure what Earthquake was for, but maybe it was to lure Ojama into a false sense of security and then boom next turn. I don't know if he had that planned out. There's going to be a Tyranitar. There's going to be a Metagross. Too threatening, but very common Pokemon in ADV. Metagross usually runs um, four attacks. Could run Hidden Power Grass, Hidden Power Fire, Meteor Mash, Earthquake, Rock Slide, Explosion, even like Psychic. I see a sludge bomb last week from Ojama on Metagross. That's cool. Could run Choice Band, could run Leftovers, could run like Lee Berry with Agility and Sub and stuff. Um, it, it could run a lot of cool stuff. Oh, Tyranitar is probably one of the most versatile, if not the most versatile Pokemon. It can run Choice Band, Dragon Dance, Special, Mixed, Sub Punch, you name it, it can do it. <laughs> um, but I think that Metagross definitely has the advantage in this matchup because Meteor Mash is strong as shit, and I believe it's a bit quicker than Tyranitar. So really, um, I think that Ojama will probably be forced out into likely a Water-type 
or maybe a Skarmory here. That's going to be his own Metagross, which works as well. And that Meteor Mass animation is cool. It's only going to 20%, so it's definitely not a Choice Bander from McMagan, but he's going to get the Attack Rise, so essentially a Choice Bander at this point. And he's likely got Earthquake, being that it's not a Choice Bander, so that's going to threaten out the Ojama Metagross, but it might not, because Ojama looks like he has a Choice Bander of his own, and he's probably quicker than the non-Choice Bander Metagross, so maybe Earthquake will threaten out McMagan to his Cloister, or potentially a Ground Resist. And that's going to be Earthquake from Ojama. And that's going to be Hidden Power Fire from McMagan. Looks like Ojama is indeed quicker, probably with the Choice Band Earthquake there doing 65. And Hidden Power Fire is going to do 40 to that. So, um, looks like McMagan might be forced out here, and maybe Ojama will try to change it up, get like an Explosion or an Earthquake on here. And, um... Yeah, so they're both fairly weakened Metagross, so this game's still pretty even so far, but Ojama definitely has an issue here, given that he's the quicker of the two Metagross, and he's going to threaten McMagan to kill it. But I'm not quite sure what Ojama will do here. I think that he might try to make a blind prediction, but he could just go for the Sith Earthquake as well. But given how offensive the nature of these two players in this game is, you know, threatening, and how much of an expert Ojama is, I really wouldn't put a past him going for a prediction here. And that's going to be no prediction. He's just going to Earthquake into the Cloister. So this looks good for a McMagan. Maybe he gets spiked up. I don't know how quick this Metagross or Cloister is. That's going to be Meteor Mash. It's going to barely fall out of Tokyo, but there is going to be an attack raise for Ojama. So that's going to put it into 2KO range. McMagan's going to say no. Because he's gotten unlucky in like the past five weeks. But I mean, really, I don't know how substantial that is. It probably was just a roll anyway. Maybe he could dodge a meteor match, you know, his Belgian on and off luck. But um, we'll have to wait and see. Um, If I had to guess, McMagan will probably stay in here and fight this. Unless he really thinks he needs it for like a late game explosion or checking something in a pinch. But um, we'll have to see. If he, he'll definitely fire this if he's got like a Doug Trio on the back, but I, I don't know his team. I've been checking the big stat of all the Because this game was directly after the Donut versus Agamemnon game. Probably pronouncing Agamemnon ten times faster. Agamemnon, Agamemnon, Agamemnon. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, I think Ojama's just going to stay in here and push the issue with Meteor Mash. I don't see any reason for him not to. But McMagian's play is a bit more open ended. He could stay in here in front of this, or he could go to um, Metagross check if he happens to have one in the back. I'm not quite too sure. But we're eight turns into this game. We don't have half the team revealed from both sides. Um, so it's hard to say. It is really hard to say. Um, yeah, Ojama's the one taking time curiously enough. This timer drops down to 90 seconds. I really think his play is just a medium match, unless he's talking for like Earthquake kills, so he could potentially bait in and kill the opposing Medgross from McMagan, although I don't think that's the play from him, or potentially kill it with plus one Earthquake, but I don't think that plus one Earthquake is going to get to kill him. Now you see McMagan's timer's dropping, so that's really him taking a time out of Ojama's same time. McMagan's at 210 seconds, Ojama's at only 90 seconds, so that's interesting at this point, but... um. I think that if McMagan has a uh, quicker steel resist that can kill it, he's definitely going to go to it. But I don't know if he has another water type, or if he happens to have a Zapdos of his own, or something like that, or not. Um, so we'll have to see. It's also, if you send him something slower, even if like a bulky water like Milotic, the problem is he could be threatened by... Um, oh! That's going to be agility there. Okay, so it's going to be agility there from the Ojama Metagross. And that could really be a threat to McMagan. Especially if it gets another, oh my god, it's another attack raise. And there goes Soul Gazer in the chat saying, LOL, because, you know, every time the single slightest thing goes against his team, he has to cry like a little bitch boy. But every time something goes for his team, he has to act like an obnoxious fucker. <laughs> but um, anyway, besides that, that's a real threat to the McMegan team. This is plus two, plus two, because he's gotten two attack raises, which is like a one in a hundred chance. So McMegan's back is up against a wall at this point. Um... I don't know what he has to check this, to be honest. Um, it's probably Meteor Mass, Rock Slide, or Explosion, plus Earthquake. There's not really many things. There's, like, Gengar to check this. Okay, McMagan is probably dead in the water of this if he doesn't dodge something, so that's bad. <laughs> yeah, so this could be a very short game. So that's going to be um, a Meteor Mass there. There's an Aerodactyl. Yup, so oh, this is um, this is not good. Yeah, that's going to kill. That, 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 that's 2.5. Oh, my God. And that this is over. It's just going to Earthquake to clean. So this is going to be... um. A uh, 5-0 win for Ojama, only revealing three Pokemon in 13 turns. So um, that's unfortunate for Megan. He's gonna just boom there, so it's gonna be 4-0. But um. That game, um, I'm not really sure how good of a game, to be honest, it was, but it was um, quite lopsided, and McMegan wasn't very prepared for the threats that Ojama had, given the conditions, although, I mean, you can't really ask him to prepare for attack races, I guess, but um, that's unfortunate, so the series is going to be 3-3, three to three, and Ojama is going to win this game, while McMegan's going to lose, and um, that's it, this is Finch, peace.